Good morning. I just wanted to um, do an update. A lot of people have been asking about the schools and what's, <coughs> excuse me, what's going on. And I wanted to give you an update. Uh, we have a leaders call every Wednesday. Um, and it includes myself, of course, uh, Wes Burnett, uh, Dr. Williams from uh, Odessa College, Dr. Woodley from UTBB, uh, Chief Huber, which is uh, one of our fire chiefs, um, Michael Marrero, city manager, uh, Judge Debbie Hayes, Dr. Saravan from um, ORMC, uh, Russell from Medical Center, and Stacy from ORMC. We have this leadership call every week, and I want to tell you just how much I appreciate all the leaders in our community. This is one of the first times I've ever seen the leaders being this close and working this hard together. COVID affects all of us in different ways. Uh, it affects schools in one way. It affects the city in a whole nother way. Uh, the county is about the same way as the, uh, the city, but we're all working together, making sure we're using the same data to make the decisions as we move forward. They talked a little bit about the schools. Uh, what I wanted to let you know is there's going to be a YouTube Live and a Facebook Live tonight. Um, Dr. Murray is going to get on there. They're gonna talk about how they're going to open the schools, what the process is going to be, uh, and give you all of that information. I'm um, also, if I can figure out how to do it, I'm going to post the questions and answers, the frequently asked questions on my Facebook so that you can get those to be able to look at them, to find out kind of what's going on with the school district. Opening up an organization with over 33,000 kids, all the teachers, all the, is a monumental task. And I could not be more pleased with Dr. Murray, all of his team over at ECISD, both colleges are doing a fantastic job of handling a problem this large. You know, dealing with the city and things like that is tough, but I honestly think Dr. Murray and his team have more responsibility than we do uh, because they're handling kids and kids are our future. And so I just wanna give you a little bit of what was said, just so you can get caught up and you know kind of what's going on. Tonight, um, if you're a parent, uh, if you just have questions, Facebook Live, seven o'clock. Uh, there will also be a YouTube Live. I believe that's what it's called, but those will be on there. It will be the plan that they gave last night to the ECISD Board of Trustees. It was approved unanimously. Let me tell you this, it's a fluid plan uh, because they are watching three factors. One, they're watching hospital capacity. Uh, that's something we've talked about on my Facebook Lives. Everybody understands that. If the hospitals get full, we as a community can get into trouble because we don't have enough space to treat everyone. Both hospitals are doing a very good job. We're all communicating and keeping uh, each other abreast of what's going on. Another are our confirmed tests. We go over those every time they come out on Facebook. Uh, you and I, we talk about those, what's going on with them, what we believe the trends are. Another one they're talking about is the positivity rate. What that means is how many out of 100 would test positive? If we took, I grabbed 100 people uh, on this Facebook Live, took them to the clinic, we all tested. What percentage? Uh, according to the CDC, 10% is really where they want communities to be at. Unfortunately, with the rise we've seen, we are at 17 17 and some change. So 17 out of every 100 that test turn up to be positive. Why is that number important? It helps us as leaders say COVID is moving in our community. If the positivity rate was at 5%, we could say, well, there are people with COVID, but it's not spreading. And that is a number that the school district is going to watch. Uh, some of you will say, well, if you get that many people adults and kids together, that rate is gonna go up. That is true. But the school district has to have it in a range where they feel comfortable saying it's an acceptable place to put kids. And so that are the three, that's the three numbers that they're looking at. 
you can get two of those numbers on Ector County website. I'm sorry, Ector County uh, website. The, they post it. You can go on there. You can see all the reports and things like that. Um, talk about the, the plan. They will open school August 12th. Now, one thing that parents are going to have to do is they're going to have to choose whether their kids are going to school or they're going to be uh, online learning. They will explain all of that this week, um, or the, sorry, tonight, uh, and be able to explain that better than I can. Uh, unfortunately, I'm trying to take notes. I don't take notes very well, but I was writing it down as quick as we can. Um, but the positive, positively rate, the confirmed cases, and the, the uh, hospital capacities are the big concern. Um, so one thing that they are talking about is in Ector County, we have a problem with Wi-Fi uh, accessibility. Uh, there are parts, uh, Dr. Murray gave a statistic of 39% of students do not have access to Wi-Fi's. This year, the school district is going to give every kid a laptop uh, to be able to use to access things. Uh, the city and the county, I'm sorry, city and Ector County School District are working together to solve this problem. We can use Odessa Development Corporation money because this is ODC money it has to be to bring in draw jobs or for education for workforce. This fits underneath that category and we can work together as the school district and the city to get Wi-Fi in certain parts of the county that does not have them at all. Uh, down south, out in West Odessa, places like that, we can use some of this so it saves us taxpayers money it is taxpayers' money because it comes from sales tax, but it saves the tax rate. You don't have to do that. We can help the school district out. They have a plan. The plan is finished. They have sent it to a panel of Wi-Fi experts uh, to be able to let them look at it and say, yes, this makes sense. They know the technology. They understand it better than your city leaders and things like that. So we are working with the companies that are here, but we're also looking at doing it so that everyone can have access because one of the most important things we do as a community is educate our kids. Those are the future uh, leaders. Uh, I went to ECISD schools. Renee Earls uh, was in the same class as I was. She went here. Wes Burnett, Stacy uh, Brown over at the hospital. We all grew up here and we want to make sure we're taking care of these kids and getting the kids to where they need to be so that our schools come up and it's stronger. But give you a little bit of information on the colleges, uh, UTPB and OC. Both are going to work off a hybrid model. Uh, at Odessa College, there are classes that are very difficult to teach online. Uh, welding, uh, also auto tech and things like that, that the workforce needs. So those will probably be on campus. Um, some such as government uh, classes like that. Some will be online. Some will have the option to be able to go on to campus. UTPB is the same way. Um, they are following the same numbers as OC and uh, ECISD to be able to look at things like that. Talk a little bit about a subject everybody has a question about, football, what's going on. Uh, according to Dr. Woodley, um, if you are going to play a sports, according to the NCAA, you have to have a test within 72 hours of the sporting event. That is for every sporting event. Well, I don't, they don't know if that can actually be done at a reasonable cost. Because if you're testing a football team every week, three days before the game, to meet that requirement, one, it costs almost $200 a test. And, you know, think about basketball season. If you're playing basketball, they're playing a test, they're playing a Tuesday, Thursday game or, a, you know, two games a week. That poor kid has to have a test every three days almost. And so that is, um, I'm guessing, just my opinion, the sports will be pushed off till the spring. Uh, that's what we're hearing on some of them. Um, ECISD said football, 
with 5A and 6A is supposed to kick off the 24th of September, but that is a soft date. They just don't know. All the other smaller districts are probably going to kick off. I think they're going to watch the other districts and see what happens. These, you know, 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, and see what happens. But, you know, I think it's probably going to be pushed off. I want to talk a little bit about uh, CARES money and what the city's been doing. We have the we received $6.6 .6 million uh, from the federal government to help our communities during this time. We have spent $750,000 on testing. Uh, that is the testing that we're doing when people go to one of the parks and get tested. That is something we felt we needed to do. We have also gotten other funds and we are in the process of getting these finished. Last week we allocated uh, just about $700,000 on some money that we were given but it is designated for underserved, which is South Odessa, some of the West Odessa. And we allocated that money to mental health organizations, uh, homeless organizations, uh, rental assistance organizations that help. We do not allocate that money. This is, we gave it to the organizations such as the Salvation Army, Odessa Links, uh, Family Promise is one that helps out with homeless. And we also helped out Meals on Wheels. Uh, they're being inundated with people that just don't have access to food. And she does a fabulous job over there. Uh, but we've done that. We are also working on something right now. Uh, there's a, I'm have a meeting tomorrow on it. Is small business um, grants or loans. Um, putting together the details of something like that to help out our small businesses. Unfortunately, we're seeing small businesses closed. I had to go to Midland to pick up something uh, the other day, and I drove by, and you could see empty building or empty retail space after empty retail space. Odessa, we're seeing the same thing. Uh, we want to make sure we protect as many jobs as we can right now to get people through this. Um, that's really where it is as far as schools. The most important thing is if you have any questions, watch tonight at 7 o'clock. Um, Channel 7 did some coverage yesterday, and they actually have a story on it. It's a little long uh, because it's talking about so many different things, but Channel 7 has a good article. But 7 o'clock tonight, uh, watch it so you can see what you need to do with your kids. And I would just like to ask very respectfully, give the school district some grace. Uh, this is a moving target, and a lot of people are going to gripe. A lot of people are going to say things. They're doing the very best they can, and I think they have a very good plan. But it's just like everything we deal with here at the city. It's a moving target. Nobody expected COVID. We're still learning. Uh, and so please give them some grace. They're doing a fantastic job, and I, I am, that's a job I do not want. And that's coming from somebody who everybody tells me, I don't want your job. So God bless each and every one of you. I will be back on later today. Talking about the numbers, uh, we should get some of those. Good news, the um, we are seeing a slowing or a leveling off of our numbers. That is fantastic. So um, God bless each and every one of you, and I will talk to you later today. I will also probably be doing another conversation uh, talking about what we are doing for the future of Odessa and the Permian Basin uh, to help make sure oil stays vital to our company, our country. So God bless each and every one of you, and I will talk to you later today. Thank you.